Welcome back to the Michigan Business Beat, brought to you on the Michigan Business Network. Chris Holman, and as you can see, we're remote. We are at the Grand Traverse Resort in Traverse City, and we're here for uh, CAR, the Center for Automotive Research's annual management uh, seminar, or briefing seminar. And uh, we have with us, of course, and I'm not going to give you all your title, because we only have like six minutes, but Glenn Stevens, head of Mish Auto, sure. and a number of other things. Uh, Glenn, it's good to see you up here, and of course, obviously, this is a place you have to be as as well as being integral to it. Yes, we've been here for many, many years and Mish Auto's built a presence here the last five or six years and if you're not in the room, you might miss something really critical and part of the conversation. This is this is a be in the room, not a Zoom type of thing. So it's good to be here. Well, you know, it's interesting because for years we came here and it was mobility, 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 and it was all about that. But there's some other issues now. I was just down and uh, caught a little bit of the keynote speaker this morning, and she was talking about management and how to make it a good place to work, et cetera. People, obviously, are one of the challenges. Yes, I just stuck out of that, too. That's Priscilla Archangel. Right. We work with very close. She's also a Detroit Chamber board member, so we know that. You know, I, she's given a great talk, and I think one of the points she made today is research shows, research data, that people who aspire to leadership need to learn communication skills from other leaders. You can't do that remote. You just can't. And so it really made another powerful reinforcement this morning. But those are the types of things we're talking about right now. Well, and another piece of this whole thing is housing, because with the, with the people shortage, uh, which which has been number one problem, uh, according to our Future Business Index, for three and a half years, um, you you got to have a place for people to, mm -hmm. to live. Yes. In fact, uh, thanks to the Michigan Municipal League, they reached out to us recently and engaged us in some legislation. We're still studying it right now. But the fact of the matter is if we're going to retain talent, we're going to attract talent, then the quality of life and the literal physical place for them to live is an issue. And housing is an issue nationwide, but it's a really big issue in Michigan. Affordable housing, accessible housing, just plain availability. Yeah, and absolutely and affordable. You you kind of hit the, the the nail on the head there. So, what is the feeling on this? Because my personal feeling is, we're never going to have enough workforce come back to work to fill the void. What what are we going to do about that? Well, I think we have a long period of time before things find some kind of new normal. We talk about the new normal. We're not there yet. Yeah. So, whether it's remote, hybrid, back to the office, companies are going to have to figure out the right equation. But again, communities play such an important part of that. And Michigan's infrastructure, housing, education system, philosophy and quality of life, they're going to be a really big factor in all this. So let's talk a little bit about um, the autonomous vehicle. Because mm -hmm. all of us are waiting to find out that it can take me to the grocery store because mm -hmm. my kids took my license. Yeah. I, it, those four themes that we've been talking about for several years now, connected, autonomous, electrified, and shared, they're all still there. Autonomous has not taken a back seat. It's just become more and more focused from a company and a research standpoint. So it's going to be solving problems. But when you look at what's really, really important in addition to autonomous, digitalization and electrification. Those are the really two hot buttons right now, but autonomous is still there with us. Yeah, and and whether or not a totally autonomous can ever be re, uh, reached, that, that's a bit of an issue too. Yeah, uh, however, you know, there's a pilot and they're here from Turkey. Mm -hmm. There's a startup company, uh, Adastec, I'm probably pronounced that wrong, uh, that's on Michigan State's campus and they're operating a level four which is near full autonomous uh, bus system uh, on Michigan State campus. So there, it's here, but that's to solve very specific high congestion, last mile types of things, and that's where the research is. So can we talk a little bit about the fuel cell? Because that was the hot thing, and I haven't heard anything about it in a while. Well, when you look at the fuel cell, um, I think we have to look at propulsion holistically, but we just had a roundtable yesterday on hydrogen. So we brought about 12 different stakeholders together, private, public, companies, the state, the governor's office was there. We had a really, really powerful roundtable to say, where does the hydrogen fuel cell, hydrogen propulsion system play? Because Michigan needs to be a leader in that space as well as electrification. So we've got a lot going on in the propulsion side and the fuel cell technology is going to really depend on applications, but we want to make sure Michigan's leading in all those areas. Well, and, and let's go back to that issue of Michigan leading. 
California desperately wants to be the uh, mobility center of the world. H how do we keep that from happening? Mm, Ohio and Ontario want to be the mobility centers too. <laughs> well, and they're true. right next door to us. So I think that what Governor Snyder put in place, what Governor Whitman has carried forward, what the Office of Future Mobility is doing, what the state is doing, what Machado is doing, all of our stakeholders, I can tell you we're focused on maintaining that leadership and making sure we go, where is it going to be next? and making sure, for example, that we're leaders in hydrogen, connectivity, digitalization, factory industry 4.0, like Automation Alley, all those things play together, and I think we're all pulling in the right direction. You know, another piece of this, of course, is infrastructure, what has to be put in the roads in their constructions, mm -hmm. et cetera. Are we moving in the right directions there? Yeah, I think um, MDOT under Director Steitel and now Paul Ajagba, they, they are just cutting edge. They mm -hmm. really are. They're world-renowned, people don't realize. They get a lot of heat for the roads, but you know what? They're doing the best they can with the funding they've had, but they are really on the forefront of what we call ITS, Intelligent Transportation Systems. So I think it was we build the infrastructure, buildings, roads, all those types of things. We're embedding connectivity into them. We have to. Well, Glenn Stevens, thanks so much for joining us from Mish Auto. We appreciate it. It's always good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thanks for the time. All right. You're watching this, of course, on the Michigan Business Beat. I'm Chris Holman. This is uh, the Michigan Business Network.